You know, most of the time when I'm watching a ridiculous display of blasphemy by a popular false teacher, I'm usually ang angry and disgusted. That's typically my response from watching uh, false teachers, especially when they're doing ridiculous things. But today when I was watching this particular clip that I'm about to show you, it really just broke my heart. I wasn't even mad. It just broke my heart. I can't express how sad, hopeless, and just empty it is to witness a multitude of people thinking, okay, keyword thinking, that they are in Christ, yet are on their way to hell. Okay, do you know how sad that is to believe you are of God and the whole time the hatred of God hangs over your head like a bucket that's filling up with water every single day until it eventually tips over? It, it, it's, God is absolutely terrifying in the way he blinds sinners. Okay? It's, a, it's, a terrible, it's a terrible thing. And it, when you really understand it right, it makes you, it puts a fear of God in your heart that it, 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 you can't explain it. You can't explain it when you truly understand how God blinds sinners. Now, I'm about to share with you a clip of T.D. Jakes and his daughter. He's probably one of the largest prosperity pastors in this country. And you know what's crazy? When I first got saved, I remember going on YouTube. Like, this is probably a couple weeks after I got saved. I remember going on YouTube and searching, literally searching for the biggest pastor. That's what I put in the search bar, the biggest pastor. Because in my ignorance, I thought the most popular pastor, meaning the numbers they had, would be the best place to start my journey in Christ. And guess whose name popped up in the search bar? It was T.D. Jakes. So I followed this man in his false ministry for about four to five months before the grace of God caused me to stumble upon a Paul Washer video from I'll Be Honest. Um, and then everything changed, thank God. But there was a time when I thought this man was of God. This man, T.D. Jakes, was of God. Uh, the glorious thing about God is that if you are truly his, he will always bring you out of that, always. If you truly possess the Holy Spirit, it will not allow you to stay under false teaching. We will always come out. Uh, I want you to kneel on this altar. For it is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit saith the Lord. It is not by DNA. It is not by birth order. It is not by favoritism or nepotism. If I did not know that the hand of the Lord was on you, I would never do this. As Samuel's horn of oil anointed David, I so anoint you. And with every drop of oil that falls upon your head, may the strength and the power of the Almighty God rest upon you. Rest upon your life. Rest upon your life. Rest upon your life. I want every woman in this room to lift up your hands and receive the anointing of God because when you leave this place I expect you to do exploits I expect you to be an overcomer I expect you to go forth and be whoever God created you to be I want every man in this room to raise your hands I know we haven't always had anybody to believe in us or support us or dream with us and we haven't always had people who weren't so selfish that they would step aside and give you an opportunity but I declare a new season in your life I declare a new moment in your life this is an impartation that is bigger than her it includes you it is time for every woman in this room to evolve into your destiny. Lift your hands and open your mouth and receive the anointing of God as it overshadows you. It overshadows you. It overshadows you. Now he says, he says something unusual about them. He says that they are like wolves. Their God is their belly. Their God is their belly. 
but they look like sheep. Now how is that? How is it that they look like sheep? By their flattering, smooth speech that in an age of tolerance makes you think that they are the men most full of love. They will never contradict. They will never be, they will never create a scandal. They will never be offensive. They will never speak forth things to anger men. But they have the smooth tongue of a serpent and they flatter men and they give carnal men exactly what they want. Now let me tell you something about false teachers. You think so many times that people fall prey to false teachers. And that, in a sense, can be true at times. But I think the dominant theme in Scripture is just the opposite. False teachers are God's judgment on people who don't want God, but in the name of religion, plan on getting everything their carnal heart desires. That's why a Joel Olstein is raised up. Those people who sit under him are not victims of him. He is the judgment of God upon them because they want exactly what he wants and it's not God. And you can line them all up along with him. That's where it is. Because let's go over. Let's just look for a minute at 2 Timothy. Just quickly. Chapter 4. Verse 1, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus who is to judge the living and the dead and by His appearing and His kingdom. Preach the word. Now, when he says preach the word, what does he say? He follows it up with, be ready in season and out of season to reprove, rebuke, exhort. Notice that that is not what these preachers do. As a matter of fact, they boast in the fact that they do not reprove. They do not rebuke. It's not their ministry. And why do they say it's not their ministry? They have a ministry of love, they say. Well, then are you saying Christ didn't have a ministry of love because He reproved and rebuked and exhorted and so did Paul? But now look, verse 3. For time will come, and this shows you that men are not so much victims of false prophets as false prophets are the judgment of God upon men who don't want God. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Who won't? The people, the religious people identified with Christianity. They will not endure sound doctrine. They can't endure it. They hate it. Or it bores them to tears. And so what do they do? But wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers. Everybody in this world, I hope you know this, everyone in the world that is involved in Christianity knows that America is the birthplace of every heretical teaching on the face of the earth almost. You know what my greatest fear is? My greatest fear is that the wall around Cuba is going to fall. You say, why would you fear that? Because all of the heresy in the evangelical church will find its way into Cuba. I go into countries and some of the times they will tell me this. Go back to your country and tell them, please don't send any more missionaries.